This is LibreQuest. My name is Matt. It is the 19th of February, 2020. The first article that I have today from LinuxToday.com. This article is written by Marius Nestor. Canonical makes it easier to download Ubuntu for Raspberry Pi. In December 2019, Canonical published a support roadmap for the latest Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer on their Ubuntu server operating system and pledged to fully support Ubuntu on all Raspberry Pi boards. With the release of Ubuntu 1804.4 LTS earlier this month, Canonical has also refreshed the Raspberry Pi page on the Ubuntu.com website to help users find the right Ubuntu version for their Raspberry Pi boards. So that is good news to hear. The next article is going to be from 9to5linux.com, also written by Marius Nestor. Critical pseudo vulnerability now patched in CentOS 7 and RHEL 7. Patches for the latest critical pseudo security vulnerability have landed in the stable software repositories of CentOS 7 and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 operating system series. A critical vulnerability CVE 2019-18634 was discovered earlier this month by Joe Vinix in the pseudo package, a program that lets users run programs in a Unix system with security privileges of another user. The flaw could allow an unprivileged user to obtain full root privileges. But that is good news to hear as well, that they have that patched up over there on CentOS 7 and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. So the historical article for today, this is from February 19 of 2005. And this is from Linux.com, and there's no attribution for the author here. Uh, but I did follow the link, and this article was apparently written by Clay Dowling. And it was actually written on February 15th of 2005, but I found this one for today's date. So I made it the historical article for today. It is titled, Linux as a Publishing Platform. In December of 2004, Clinton Nixon published his role-playing game, The Shadow of Yesterday. The content of the book was nothing shocking, nor was the fact that he published the book himself. Independent authors have been writing role-playing games for as long as there have been role-playing games. Likewise, self-publication is not a new phenomenon. The revolutionary thing in Clinton's case is the fact that only open-source tools were used, from authorship to artwork to page layout. Clinton's choice of tools is slightly unusual for an author. He wrote his text with VI, an editor more traditionally used by programmers than by authors. His choice partially is explained by the fact that Clinton is also a programmer. Because he's a programmer, it also was natural a natural choice for him to use Python's doc tools to convert the text source to HTML, the format used to publish the book on the web. This copy of the book was released under a Creative Commons license. So that is a really cool article, and I was actually pretty excited to find that. I do like to um, hear from and hear about people that are have dedicated a project or or a work of like you know work of art or or something just like their their creative you know thing that they've decided to do and and be strict about you know what they use and what sort of languages they use and that sort of thing and you know I'm 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 a bit like that myself I have a I have a I guess the best way to describe it would just be a PHP personal homepage uh, project and I was very determined to be extremely strict about only um, accomplishing the things that I wanted to accomplish using only PHP, HTML5, CSS3, or I should say PHP7 uh, standards, and only accomplishing it that way. And it was very, very difficult at times. It took me about three years um, to complete. And, you know, it's... Uh, I use it. <laughs> I have, I have, I think, seven... Uh, websites where it's actually it's been running in you know production for you know that entire time and I made an update system and all that stuff and it only wanted to use PHP and you know that's just I'm dedicated that way and I, I, I like to hear from people that are you know kind of think the same way or dedicated the same way to doing the same kind of thing you know once you get your mind stuck on something but moving on what I'm going to be talking about tonight is um the main topic of the podcast is going to be the Vivaldi web browser. Now, talking about licensing, the Vivaldi web browser is built on a Chromium base. Uh, however, it is proprietary, uh, free-to-use software. And the reason I'm talking about it is because it runs natively on Linux. And that is awesome. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. And mostly the features and what kind of drew me into um, the Vivaldi browser was... 
uh, for one, I, I noticed an article February 9th of this year uh, just kind of outlining some of the updates that they had made to the web browser and some of the features in regard to um, the pop-out uh, media players. And, you know, it got me interested. And one of the first features that I noticed was the, there's a little trash can icon up in the top right of the web browser. And when you click the trash can, it shows you what tabs you just closed. And that's especially useful to me because sometimes uh, you know, I'll read something and I'll close it or I will, I'll search something and I'll close it. And I'm like, what did I do with that? And I'll have to go sorting through my history trying to find it. Well, this just shows your, your tabs and you click on it and you can just pull up what tabs you've, you've recently closed. And it's pretty handy. Uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty handy I was like what in the world is this you know it was, it was cool it's a cool surprise to see so that that really got me interested in like uh, doing a an overview podcast about the Vivaldi web browser and that's v-i-v-a-l-d-i web browser so very interesting browser I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have the website pulled up here if you're watching the video version um, it's the Vivaldi uh, vivaldi.com website and I'm just basically going to read through uh, what they've published as far as the desktop side of things, just the features, tab management, user interface, and customization. Those are the sections I'm going to be reading. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that is especially uh, intriguing to me, um, and I'll, I'll comment on that as I read through it here. So under desktop, I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is go under features. And before I go any further, actually, I want to say... Um, I'm going here to the, the very top left of the browser is the Vivaldi um, logo. And I'm going under help and to about because I want to read the Vivaldi version that I'm using. And that's going to be version 2.11 is the latest version. I actually downloaded this uh, copy today. And the full version is 2.11.1811.38. So that is the version that I'm using. And I'm using it on an Ubuntu base distro. Okay, so under desktop features, the very first thing here is going to be, actually, nope, that is not the section I wanted. I wanted tab management. Okay, yeah, that's the first section I wanted. Okay, so the first thing you see here is your tabs. You can either have them appear on the top on the bottom, on the right, or on the left. So you can customize the position of where your tabs are going to show up. And depending on what you're doing, your screen resolution, uh, you know, how much screen real estate you have, um, how you want to allocate that, that can be a really, a really uh, thoughtful, really considerate um, for, you know, different workflows and being able to, to rearrange things the way that you need them. So that's a really cool feature there. Um, the next one is grouping tabs. This is pretty awesome. So you can uh, group your tabs together. If you have a certain amount of tabs that are on a certain subject, you can put them in a group. Um, you can also view your tabs in split screen. Now, the reason that this is really cool is, um, it, you know, it's, it's kind of one, it's one of the first features that I noticed about the uh, KDE advanced text editor. And uh, if you watch the episode, uh, I can't remember, I think it was episode 24, 23. Um, I read some responses back from uh, Christoph Coleman um, about uh, some of the telemetry issues, or you know, it's not issues, but some of the um, some of the advancements being made there as far as con the consideration of telemetry and stuff, and collection of telemetry for the for uh, for Kate, and so that's what I was reading about. Um, but the reason I I reached out to him is because I've used Kate for so long, and one of the cool features in Kate is that, of course, the split view. Um, and you know, not, not to mention the terminal and, and all the different, you know, tools that are built into that. So this is cool. You know, the split, uh, split screen, uh, feature is really cool. Very handy stuff there. Uh, let's see, you can manage tabs from the sidebar. It says the window panel gives you a tree style overview of tabs and allows you to search and manage your tabs right from the sidebar. So that's nice. You can go through, you can search through the different tabs that you have open. And then this one is especially nice you can hibernate your tabs so uh, meaning if you have a group of tabs uh, that you're not currently using um, you know if you've grouped them according to your work your personal workflow you can hibernate those tabs to where your you know your browser is not going to be using uh, however many system resources it's uh, using at the time you can you know kind of roll that back a bit 
by hibernating them. So I'm actually looking at my system activity right now, and I'm, I'm using the Plasma desktop, and over on one of my other screens here, I have that full screen. Uh, right now, I have four tabs open. I'm using, let's see here, 102 uh, megabytes of RAM. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna see if I can just hibernate. I'm gonna hibernate all the other tabs, not the other four tabs I have open. And let's see, see if that has any effect on on that. Yeah, I'm using I'm using less RAM now, so I'm using uh, 99 megabytes. Okay, <laughs> that's the, you know that if if you have a um, hundred tabs, and I have certainly seen that. Now I don't personally do that. I I've ne I don't think I've ever had 100 tabs open, but a lot of people depend on having that many tabs open for their business or uh, whatever particular work that they might do. And this feature is seriously great because it's going to affect the speed that they can you know get their job done, the the, the speed of their system by being able to free up some uh, system resources. So that's very nice. Okay, so let's go under user interface. Um, okay, yes, the theming. So choose your style is the is the heading of this feature. Uh, use ultra customizable themes to give your browser a look that's uniquely yours. Create a schedule to change your browser's theme throughout the day. That's really cool. Um, you know, that's a that's a big um, a big consideration these days with so much screen time. Is the effect that. Um, uh, certain colors, uh, especially blues, that uh, can have on your eyes, uh, you know, can affect your ability to get rest and sleep. So this is this is really cool that you can change the theme of the browser depending on the time of day. So that's a very nice feature to have. Uh, let's see, add any site to your sidebar with, uh, let's see, web panels make checking your favorite chat apps, social feeds, and new sites a breeze. Add as many as you like, rearrange them with drag and drop. You can even drop a specific panel using custom shortcuts. Okay, so that's very nice. And that is the panel that's located on the left side of the browser, on the left side of the screen. Now, I'm sure, let's see, under here we have a little gear settings. And it looks like that is, of course, going to be uh, customizable as well. I'm sure that's going to be customizable as far as the location. Let's see here. Home page. Oh my, there's so many options. Now, as a as a long time KDE and now Plasma user, um, when something is this customizable, it makes me feel at pretty much at home. <laughs> you know, as far as the GUI side of things go, um, I like to customize things. I like to tweak things. I like to be able, and even if I don't use the features, I like to have that option available to me. I like to have that level of you know. Uh, control over over my interface and, and you know just the system and being able to customize and stuff so anyway yes that's the panel over there uh, that is talking about okay so an adaptive interface Vivaldi let's see Vivaldi adapts to you but it also adapts to the sites you visit the interface the interface can pick up on the main color of the website you're viewing and use it as an accent color so yes that is very cool let, let me open up a tab here I'm gonna go over to uh, let's try let's try Bing okay so Bing has changed the uh, color of the browser to a gray color so that's cool so yes it changes and um, I'm actually wondering because I have um, I have actually oh what's happened here I've just noticed that well you know what I typed in I typed in a letter B and on the video side of things over here it took me it took me to a different uh, to a camera view, <laughs> so so I lost my I lost my browser view there. Okay, anyhow, let's see. Um, I'm getting sidetracked. I do that quite often. Okay, so let's. Where was I? Take a position on your toolbars. I'm just gonna get right back into it. I seriously that that uh, threw me off there. Okay, so yes. Oh no, no, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about the browser changes color depending on the website that you're vid visiting, and. Um, now that's a that's a feature that um, uh, I think it was the Unity desktop. Um, that was one of the features that they had rolled out when you changed your desktop background. The panel on the side uh, kind of uh, picked up on the I guess the majority of the color there, and it, it changed the panel according to that. That's kind of what that feature reminds me of. It's cool, uh, but I was thinking as a web developer, I have often used um, custom style sheets to you know, colorize the, the, uh, toolbar 
that's on the top of the window uh, for mobile and for for desktop depending on if the browser has support built in for that um, but uh, you know so I'm wondering how that will interact with this browser uh, I'm not sure if that's like an override thing or I'm not really sure how that works but you know that's a question that I have about this so okay so the next header is going to be take a position on toolbars customize the placement and appearance of the address bar bookmark bookmarks bar and status bar in Vivaldi place them at the top or bottom of the screen adjust their size and with the user interface zoom or hide them all together so more customization that's always awesome in my opinion uh, the next header is going to be content comes first use reader view to focus on what matters the content cut down the clutter on any page and enjoy reading again with adjustable font size and color schemes okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and move over to customization all right all right so this header under customization it's your browser create a workflow that's uniquely yours with customizable shortcuts gestures and behaviors you won't find anywhere else Vivaldi adapts to you not the other way around okay. feel at home change the look and feel of your browser with endless design options using themes a fully customizable start page and more you can finally make a browser that belongs to you and no one else and this last one extensions work work too we aim to to provide i'm sorry having trouble here a little tired as usual we aim to provide as much built-in functionality as possible but you can also fine-tune things further using extensions from the chrome web store okay so i think that's going to wrap it up on the overview here of the vivaldi web browser but this this web browser is definitely very interesting to me um you know it caught my eye just uh because maybe it's because i uh, do some web design and that kind of stuff and graphic design and those kind of things that you know this is a project that I hadn't looked into and I really I really wanted to look into it and you know the what I'm finding here is very compelling and this may be uh, something that I uh, stick with here I'm not sure yet but uh, it, you know it's looking really good I really like the Vivaldi browser I like the things they're doing I like the customizability and you know i like all the considerations that they've put into this uh, this definitely is uh worth checking out if you haven't checked out the vivaldi web browser i i do recommend it okay well that's going to do it for now um as always thank you for listening to the podcast if you want to support me you can over on subscribe star and patreon uh links for the articles will be in the uh, show notes and you can visit librequest.org under episodes for where to find the show and thank you for listening and until next time this has been librequest